interesting. What is? All the curls on the nape of your neck grow clockwise except for one. Oh, yeah? Which one? That one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for trying to be different. Goodbye, Curly. Do you know, you've got a very erotic neck. Well, of course I do. Not so much of the lust, please. I never had all this trouble when I went to the barbers. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Who do you fancy for the cup, then, this year, sir? Ah, oh, that's better. Dunno. Oh. Um, and your holidays this year, sir? Nope. Oh. Wife keeping well? Yep. One-sided conversation, isn't it? No, it always was. If the customer's due to listen to the barber, because sooner or later the barber is going to get on his hobby horse. Oh, yes, what was old Mr Webster's hobby horse? Esperanto. <laughs> Fancy old Mr Webster being able to speak Esperanto. Oh, he couldn't speak it. Just like to talk about it. Oh, I see. <laughs> right, there you are. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, thank you. Say, you're getting good at this. Thank you. Next, please. That's you. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, let me have no, a go. Don't go on. let's get grown. Let me give you an Audrey Hepburn. I've always wanted to do no, one of those. Don't you dare. Go on. A David Bowie. Get off. The guy the first half of it took. Oh, I've got it, Phil. I've got it, yes. I tell you, some Alice. Yes. I see the asylum hasn't set the van yet. <laughs> Hello, Margaret J. Come in. Hello. Oh, Tom. One does not wish to be a wet blanket, but playing with scissors, open scissors, can be terribly dangerous. <laughs> You're very sensible, aren't you, Margaret? I try to be. <laughs> Sit down there. Well, how was Amsterdam? Ah. Oh, very, um, what's the word? Ah. Very Dutch. Well, yes, I suppose it would be, really. How did you con old sir into a free binge up there, anyway? I happen to be a first-class salesman. And? And the last time I played sir at golf, I missed two three-inch putts. Goody two-shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I bought you this. Oh. Oh, Margo, how thoughtful. Thank you. Of course, simply everyone brings something back in the shape of clogs when bringing... A present from Holland. <laughs> but I thought, Margot, no, you will not follow the herd. So I bought you a windmill. Oh. Oh, a paperweight. How Dutch. Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> the sales went round in the shop, Jerry. Well, don't blame me. I do blame you. I said when we were packing that this must go in the hand baggage and not be squashed. And what happens? You cram the bag to the brim full of duty-free booze and Tom and Barbara's little sales won't go round. Well, <laughs> never mind. Splash out the booze and we'll never notice. Yeah, sorry. Pop round sometime. We'll kill off a bottle of Dutch gin. What a good idea. Tom, is that human hair? Afraid so. Well, anything happened while we were away? Oh, yes. Your allotment came through. Ah. An allotment of what? Earth. The sort of things you see from railway carriages. It's next to mine. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. I see the real reason for that second bottle of champagne at the Krasnopolsky now. <coughs> Sweeten me up before you tell me you're going to be late for every single Sunday luncheon from now on. Why well, should I be? I am not a fool, Jerry. I know about allotments. They are places where men go to sit in silly little sheds so they don't have to talk to their wives. <laughs> brick by brick, she is building a madhouse. Look, if you don't want to talk to me, Jerry, at least have the courage to look me straight in the face and say, shut up, Margot. Shut up, Margot. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, Margot, it is nice to have you back. It's been so dull. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Nevertheless, Jerry, I'm no, not... No, 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 listen. Jerry's allotment isn't for Jerry, it's for me. The council will only let me have one. I need all the land I can get, so I'm having Jerry's as well. Two allotments? Oh, surely that bomb site you call your back garden is enough. I need the extra yardage for my speciality crops. I don't follow. Raspberries, strawberries and black currants, Margot. They're going to help us pay any big bills we get next year. We hope. What you might call convertible currency. <laughs> 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 well, I'm sorry. I despise allotments. They're so Brixton-y. And if you ever let anyone know that one of them is in Jerry's name, I shall never talk to you again. Scout's honour. Tom! Oh, sorry. Hello. Tom, got any oil? I want to clean the rotary cultivator. I'll have a rest. It's six o'clock. No, bags of time. Bags of time. In the shed. Shed. Right. What on earth was that? That's Guy. He's a student. We've got two of them helping us out for a week on their holidays. Helping you out with what? Well, stones and bricks, mostly. There's a lot of work to do on that ground. Your allotments is terrible. A barber says you don't do the front garden and the back garden. Oh, yes, I'm just bone idle, I suppose. Yes. But you don't have any money. What are you going to pay them with? Beads and blankets? Board and lodging. 
and a novel experience, I suppose. You mean you're keeping them in the house? Where do you expect us to put them in with the pigs? <laughs> Best place for students, if you ask me. And they say the British belief in tolerance and fair play is dead. It lives, Jerry, in you. <laughs> and the Klu Klux Klan. All right, call it a blind spot if you like. I just happen to think that students are lazy, grubby, irresponsible ingrates. And if they're helping you with the allotment, it's only in order to grow next year's crop of marijuana. And, might I add, they repay me for subsidising their grants by forming Maoist cells in every one of our major cities. Yeah, yeah. Well, you certainly opened my eyes. They've taken me right in. Getting up early, working like dogs, keeping their room clean is all a trick. You wait. You'll see. <laughs> oh, don't be so stuffy. They're nice kids, both of them. Guy and Ruth. Ruth? That's a girl's name. <laughs> so it is. One of them must be a girl, Tom. Oh. <laughs> that must be the one with the bumps in the jersey. <laughs> and you said their room? Yeah. I don't know how to phrase my next question. <laughs> no, they're not married. Tom. Well, it has been known, Margot. People have cohabited before marriage. <coughs> <laughs> Yes, well, I can't sit gossiping here all day. I've got a thousand things to do. Get yourself a couple of students to help out. Jerry, home. Well, we'll leave you to your hairy paragons of virtue, then. I didn't say they were perfect. Ah. Just that, well, they're, they're so serious, aren't they? So earnest. You know, Tom, I know they're only 20, but I think they're a bit old for us. <laughs> <laughs> I am replete of serpentum. Well, don't just sit there, woman. Go to the washing up. No, please, let us do it. No, let him do it. Ching Chang Chala. All right. Right. Ching Chang Chop. Ching Chang Chop. Ching Chang Chop. You lose out in the kitchen. Please let us do it. Certainly not. Go on then. No, <laughs> don't. It's his turn anyway. Oh, come on. Let's go and have a sit down first. Oh, thanks. Oh, I forgot my wine. I'll get it for you, Tom. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Reality, Ruth. I know what you mean. What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Do you know, before we came here, we'd never eaten food before. <laughs> really? That dinner was food. Yes, that's what we usually have for dinner. <laughs> yes, but I'm making the distinction, Barbara, between just eating and food. Oh, yes. I see. <laughs> well. Yes? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Say something, Tom. Oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yes, well, um... I was just going to ask you uh, how you're getting on in university. University? That's just a place where a lot of students go to acquire knowledge. Mm -hmm. True, true. But, I mean, are you uh, getting a tick for your sums? That's what I mean. <laughs> that is the most incisive single-line castigation of the entire system that I have ever heard. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> what guy means, Tom, is that here is a true university. This is a university of life. <laughs> oh, if you're going to talk about life, I'm going to do the washing up. No. Nope. No, this is a really important question, Barbara. Oh, is it? Go on, then. You see, there you are, and you've decided, and you're doing it. Exactly, yes, yes. Whereas Ruth and me, we're here too, who have come into it. And to us, it's a sociological revelation, you see. You, you mean you, you like the way we've decided to live? Oh, why don't I shut my mouth? Why don't I just shut my big fat mouth? I know what Guy means. Do you? <laughs> tell us. Please tell us. He means that you're so succinct, Tom. You should talk and we should just listen. Listen. Yes, we should listen. <laughs> Perhaps it's... Shh. Sorry. Go on, Tom. <laughs> well, don't just sit there, Maharishi. Tell them. Oh, no. All right. I, I, I don't know what they want to know. We want you to expound your philosophy, Tom. We want to know how it came to you, how you made it happen, and how you relate it to the rest of society. I look, Barbara's right. I'm not a guru. You're underselling yourself, Tom. 
I think you've got a message for the world. <laughs> I mean, the only message I've got for the world is leave me alone. <laughs>